That is correct. Right. Um, first, I want to tell everybody this is posted on the website, stopthecrime.net, and it is a nationwide alert. A major university has teamed up with Google Earth to identify if your private property is infected, and they're using GPS coordinates, and I won't go into that in great detail other than to say that uh, California and parts of Oregon are being attacked with a sudden oak death syndrome. It's affecting trees, oak trees and laurel trees. The trees are dropping by the, by the hundreds, and this has been happening since the late 90s. Oh, no, they've lost tens of thousands of oaks. And, uh, and yes, uh, they have. They're deforesting us. In the Iron Mountain documentary yeah. and in the report, you will see the intention is to deforest us. And the sudden oak death syndrome is a cover, a guise for the geoengineering program that is being kept secret, and the government won't uh, discuss that. So look at that on our website. This is an unbelievable thing. They're telling us, Jeff, that when you uh, go door to door to your neighbors, to ask them if you can collect dead uh, tr- uh, leaves that look like they may have the right. sudden oak death disease, right. then you can put it in a UC Berkeley uh, collection packet. That will be shipped down to the lab, and it will be determined if those trees are, in fact, infected, and then that will be placed on Google Earth map so that everyone can see where the infected areas are. Now, if there are uh, as many infected areas as we know there are, we know that this is uh, nationwide, um, and not oak trees. They'll identify other trees because trees are dying by the hundreds of thousands all over the all over the planet. In any event, uh, they say that you track this mold on your shoes, your tires, your bikes, mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. tools, camping equipment, what have you, mm-hmm. and you've got to disinfect everything that you go into the forest uh, with bleach and use a heavy brush. We know that ultimately they're going to restrict access into the parks. This is all a guise. Uh, this is the Wildlands Project in action. This is going to uh, a limit and, and end our ability to go into the open space. And yesterday, our county board of supervisors here in uh, uh, Sonoma County, which is the north coast of California, just uh, five to zero, fortunately, disapproved the state parks wanting to implement what they call an Iron Ranger, where they want to charge you um, to park in the parking lot uh, <laughs> to go down to the beaches. Yeah, so I, I can know. tell you right now we're under massive attack. But more than that, uh, we before we all are lobotomized with all the chemicals that they're dumping on us, and while we all can still think, we must get this information out as quickly as possible and digest it in as, as uh, tight of uh, bundles of information as possible. So that's why we've put those source documents up, selected those documents, Because we believe that if everybody were to read uh, the Silent Weapons, Quiet Wars document and then go scroll on down through those documents within, uh, you know, 10 hours, they would be pretty much up to speed. And they would then know how to take that information into their local city councils and understand what is happening to them. Because we are being murdered right now. Let me go back to the sudden oak death. This is uh, something that is real. Uh, And it has killed at least uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of trees. We don't really know. It's a plant pathogen. It's not a joke. It kills oaks and other species. You mentioned laurel. It also have a a devastating effect on other woody kinds of shrubs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rhododendrons. Well, our beautiful rhododendrons, which everyone loves. Viburnum, another wonderful shrub. Uh, there are several of them. This this thing is not strictly re- required to have an oak tree to proliferate on and kill it. It's, well, I've uh, got to tell you that that's absolutely true, Jeff. In fact, there are hundreds and thousands of acres of standing dead Jeffrey pines all over the mountains here in California, all, actually all over the right. uh, United States. It yep. is a massive yep. attack. Yep. It is a deforestation plan. That is. So you think that this pathogen was man-made and released? Absolutely. Uh, well, no, when you say absolutely, we've got to have a little more than that. What, well, what do you base that on? Well, absolutely, I will tell you why. Um, uh, Agriculture Defense Coalition, uh, Rosalind Peterson, worked for the uh, Agriculture Division here in California, and they had were having crop losses, and they were sending all this information to the lab to try to figure out what was happening. And uh, they discovered that it was airborne pathogens. And that is when she started uh, right. her website, CaliforniaSkyWatch.com, mm-hmm. yeah. and has been talking all over the globe 
about what is happening with the overhead uh, geoengineering program. Now, I can tell you UC Berkeley has received many packets of information and studies, and every time we go to these meetings uh, and we address the fact that we have uh, high humidity factors, we have diminishing sunlight, uh, plants are absolutely being minimized, growth plants, I mean, this is multiple uh, layers of purposes here. This is creating famines because of the reduced uh, food generation, and the geoengineering program is a con uh, covered by the idea of global warming. Right. And we know that um, it's superheating the atmosphere. We also know, more importantly, that we are all now, uh, uh, literally, we have nanofibers in every single one of us. I even checked my four-year-old grandchild, uh, our cats, our animals, etc. Everybody. How, how, has, did you, how did you check? Well, I'm going to tell you, um, uh, although I want to jump into these source documents, but everybody can go to Radio Shack, mm -hmm. and for about $10, you can buy a little um, combination microscope and a light and it's about the size of a cigarette pack of cigarettes and then you hold that up t close to your arm and just um, focus it and you will see these long whitish opalescent strands in fact on our website you're talking about morgellons i am those are morgellon strands and those don't necessarily we all have morgellons Globally, they say about 98%. Everybody's infected. Mm -hmm. And that is essentially phase one of a multi-phased program. We're all in phase one. So um, what I do want to say is um, uh, you can go to ToxicSky.org. You can look at the flyer that we've pulled together about Morgellons disease. It talks about the combination of barium and uh, frequencies and, of course, all the environmental pollutants causing this disease. And it will show you what to look for, and you can go to other links and see how to test for it. But uh, that light at Radio Shack is uh, the most inexpensive way, and I carry that around with me all the time to show people what has already happened. We are being now these, transformed. These, these uh, well, I agree, terraformed, as it were, on a human basis. Yes, uh, that's these, exactly. These uh, fibers... Are you suggesting that they are, we have to take a break here, but are they coming from the spraying overhead or are they coming from other locations and venues? Because uh, I, Well, yes, I'm understanding that they're being sprayed on us overhead, and I understand that this is a bio-app, mm -hmm. and it is the greatest revelation in human history. And right. that is why this overhead geoengineering program is kept to the secret level that it is. This is why you can see what you see and you're told you don't see what you see. Very and, good. Uh, All right, hold on. Hold on, Deborah, right there. We have to pause just for a couple of minutes. Come right back. We're going to get to these source documents. What page are they on? StopTheCrime.net? Stop, StopTheCrime.net, right. source tab, uh, uh, source tab, and then get on to the source documents. We're going to go into the quiet weapons for a bit here and then move on over to the NASA document. Silent weapons for quiet wars. Or quiet weapons for silent wars. Works both ways. The late, great William Cooper put that in his book. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Hang on. Okay, back with Deborah Tavares. And if you go to stopthecrime.net, we'll take a look at some documents there. And if you reload the homepage at rents.com, look under guests, you'll find that link there. And other things as well. Okay, stop thecrime.net. Yes, and Jeff, um, we've been warned. The documents have been available for a very long time. It's not too late for people to quickly uh, get on the learning curve because the plans that they have for us are accelerating. And so as this acceleration continues and as more of their plans are revealed, it's going to be more unimaginable for people. So the sooner, the better. We are in a new reality, and we have to move over psychologically into the new reality because of the massive deception that we have been fed and the matrix that we have been uh, in. Well, soon the gap will be too far for people to bridge. doesn't matter well, how much is on the Internet. You're right. They just won't be able to believe it. That's why we've got to work quickly. We've got to get this information out. People need to read the silent weapons. And I'm going to read a quote that the FBI director said. Um, he said, the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. The American mind simply has 
not come to the realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. It rejects even the assumption that human creatures could espouse a philosophy which must ultimately destroy all that is good and decent. This That's right, because the controllers are, are sociopaths, psychopaths. They don't look at morally uh, anything. And in That's fact, correct. they think that morality is a weakness, and they laugh at it. They prey on it because well, people are hung up on moral, basic moral guidelines, at least they used to be, and, and well, that's Well, they the are, and in their documents, they will tell everyone that reads them just that. And the quote was from the former FBI director, J. Edgar Hoover, in 1956. Kennedy also has had some uh, warning quotes as well. They're posted on StopTheCrime.net. But I want to move into the silent weapons document after I, t I just go over the fact that, uh, of course, everyone knows that America is under a lawless legal system and the Constitution is no more. We're now USA, Inc. Correct. We are being run by mega corporations and mega banks posing as legitimate government, which they're not. And sadly, many still are living with the illusion created by the propaganda media machine, CNN, ABC, NBC, Fox, the BBC, etc. And the FCC and the WHO and the AMA and the EPA, all of these agencies are just simply agencies under the mother corporation, USA Inc. and Earth Inc. We're in Earth Inc. So it is most important to understand that. And as far well, as... In the, you know, they were in the aggregate, all the organizations from the mainstream media to the AMA really compromise the fourth branch of government. We, we have four branches now. And they are all accountable, of course, to these mega corporations. But that's the fourth branch of government. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you that we are now Earth Inc. And according to documents and according to the facts, that's uh, where we are at this point. So moving into the silent weapons document, um, it's really important to understand that. Um, where, do we, where do we find it on the page? Help people find it. Okay, well, I'm going to go through page by page, but I'm just going to do a general summary of a couple of paragraphs right now, and then I will start listing page numbers as I go through specific Okay, things. but where on the page can they find it? That's what I wanted to point oh, them to. Oh, on the website. Okay, mm -hmm. under um, stopthecrime.net, yeah. source documents, and then you'll see silent right weapons, quiet Right top wars. in the middle. Okay, gotcha. Yes, All right. Yes, and then open that up. And then people can follow along, or they can listen to this later and go through the document as we discuss it. Very but good. But just a general uh, uh, overlay right now, and then we'll go into page numbers. It's very, very uh, important to understand the policy of the silent weapons. And it maps out um, the covert schemes and the fact that war was declared upon all people by this diabolical group. The silent weapons system is a type of biological warfare which attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. This weapon is applied gradually. The public adjusts and adapts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, the psychological via the economic, becomes too great and they crack up. The public cannot comprehend this weapon and cannot believe that they're being attacked and subdued by a weapon. Yep. So this is very important to understand how they devised the silent weapon strategy. So now we're on page four of the silent weapons document. And I will tell you, though, that it is a, a policy that was adopted by the Bilderbergs at their first Bilderberg meeting in 1954. And uh, so that is where this started, and you can read that um, prior to page four. Okay, the manual, it says, the manual itself is an analog, a declaration of intent. It says such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny. Otherwise, it would be recognized as a formal declaration of domestic war. And they say a domestic war exists between the said persons or groups of persons and the public. And it talks about how the solutions of today's problems require an approach which is ruthlessly candid with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. 
they go on on page five to uh, discuss how Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Foundation, got in on the ground floor by making a four-year grant to Harvard College, funding the Harvard Economic Research Pro Project for the study of the structure of the American economy. And then one year later, in 1949, the United States Air Force joined in. We're going to talk about the United States Air Force when we move on over into the NASA war document, but I want you to take note. The Air Force joined in. We're moving over to page six of the silent weapons document. Uh, the quiet war was quietly declared by the international elite at a meeting held in 1954. And then under energy on page um, six, they talk about all science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge, the end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue, who will be the beneficiary? And in 1954, this was the primary issue of concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised in the view of law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people that will not use their intelligence are no better than animals and who do not, do not have intelligence. So people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. They talk about in the interest of the future of the world and peace and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy, the wealth, of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. All right, very good. We have to pause right there, and we'll come right back. Okay, back with Deborah Tavares. When did Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars first appear? Was it in Cooper's book, or did someone have it before that? Well, it was prior to that, and at the beginning of the document, it does discuss uh, where this was uh, originally uh, found in the preface. So I encourage everybody to What go year would that have been? It was supposed uh, well, to have been found in, in a 19... government copy machine. Yeah, it was, in, um, it, it was found in a Boeing aircraft uh, uh, copy machine that was an uh, IBM, actually, copier that mm -hmm. was purchased for scrap. Mm -hmm. And it was found on July 7th of 1986. And uh, then it was uh, massively released, and then, of course, William Cooper uh, heard about it, and that became one of the beginnings of his book. That's a, a whole document in the right. beginning he of his book. Right, he just dropped the whole thing in there. I read it first in, in uh, well, it had to be 88 or 89, uh, and it was a shocker. Well, it um, is a shocker, and yeah. I'm going to tell you what they talk about, uh, what the purpose of the silent weapons is. They said the silent weapons, sil uh, quiet wars, was necessary to create and secure and apply new weapons, which they say was a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and the public appearance as to turn, be a, a, earn themselves the name silent weapons. And here's what they describe. Everything that is expected of an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creator. It shoots situations instead of bullets, right. propelled by data processing instead of chemical reactions or explosives, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnet instead of a military general. They say that it makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily or social life. Yet, it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily and social life, unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. They say the public cannot comprehend this weapon and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feelings in a rational way or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. All right. 
Total disconnect from any normal response. They just don't know how to do it. Absolutely, and they say that when it's applied gradually, the public adjusts and adapts. Yeah, it's the rest- boiling frog. Absolutely, sure. and that they'll crack up, which is why we're hearing so much about mental illness and drugs, because it is a weapon that is so insidious. But here's what they say on page 8. The silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. And Rothschild, of course, uh, discovered uh, the basic principles of power and influence and control over the people, and he applied this to economics, and this is discussed on page 9. I'm going hastily through this because I want to or you can uh, come sense. back, Deborah. Don't I don't want to see I don't want this pace to be so fast that we leave the people behind. I want them to be able to savor, think about, process, and at least hold on to for a couple of good moments each of these very important points. And they can all go back and review it, of course, but getting them to do that in this frenetic society is not easy. So Well let's that's just absolutely t- true. T- and take what your I time. want Yes, okay. Well thank you, Jeff. What I really want to move to though, and we can always bring more information back into future discussions, but I want to get into uh, work work towards the data information because everybody is hearing so much about the data mining. Right. And I think that is critical for them to know. All right, let's do the NASA war document next visit then. Let's just take a look. Okay, well, we can certainly do that, but I I will uh, leave everyone with a big, uh, with a nice paragraph about what that is so that if they decide to go into that prior to our next show, they can. But it is extremely important that without our data, this whole assault would not have happened, and they discuss this in this document. Uh, They talk about um, the final key to economic control had to wait until there was sufficient data and high-speed computing equipment to keep close watch on the economic oscillation created by price shocking and excess paper energy credits, and that's on page 10. And they then on page 11, the res- they talk about how they monitored the household predictability and how it was all manipulated and how everything is, uh, they say, then the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under control of a sophisticated computer regulated social energy bookkeeping system. They go on to say that eventually every individual element of the structure comes under computer control through a knowledge of personal preferences, such knowledge guaranteed by computer association of consumer preferences, uh, price codes. um, They talk about uh, all the price codes on the packages are identified and linked to each individual person and it identifies individual consumers, and uh, the tattooed uh, body number invisible under normal ambient uh, light with all the credit card information. Uh They go Uh on to say that energy is the key to all activity on the face of the Earth. It allows that in order to attain a monopoly of energy, raw materials, goods, services, and to establish a world system of slave labor. It is necessary to have a first strike capacity in the field of economics in order to maintain the elite position. They say it was necessary that they have absolutely first knowledge of the science of control over all economic factors and the first experience at engineering the world economy. They say that this is necessary in order to achieve the elite sovereignty, that they must at least achieve this one end, that the public will not make either the logical or mathematical connection between economics and other energy sciences or learn to supply or apply such uh, knowledge. Well, you're right, Deborah. Hold on again. We have to pause. The, the, The general public now is becoming essentially mentally incompetent. Uh, It can no longer string together linear thought, uh, packets of information flowing all over the place now. There's no cohesion, and I'm I'm not optimistic about this. They got to where they wanted to be, and they are now dealing with 
a populace that just has virtually zero potential to push back in a meaningful way. Even the Brazilians are out in the streets, for goodness sakes, by the hundreds of thousands. Look That's at the right. Turks. The Turks. There's I mean, they're all out. Uh, and they're stripping Greece, and now they're selling all the islands. It's I just know. a mess. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's really beyond belief, but it's happening. Hold on yeah. just a minute. We'll come right back. Perfectly named Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. These aren't really quiet wars, though. They're utter domination of the planet. And the Absolutely. techniques and the tools are right there, and they, they, they've spelled them out. This document, again, was found in a, a surplus or used copy machine, and uh, it's uh, quite a treasure trove. I remember reading them. I, I just This is 1988 or so. Right. I was, I was just slack-jawed. I just could hardly believe what I was well, seeing. Well, everyone needs to go to StopTheCrime.net, download all of the source documents, the Iron Mountain. Uh, report the silent weapons, but I'm going to jump on to page 31 of the silent weapons document right now and talk about the data mining that is fed into their computers and what they've been doing. This uh, sudden revelation of the surveillance and all the data mining is no new news. And if people oh, read no. this document, they'll understand the depth of the data mina, mining. Mm -hmm. And the questions that they asked in 1954 when mm -hmm. this policy was adopted by the Bilderbergs they wanted to know everything about us. They wanted to know the what, the where, the why, the when, the how, and the who. And they talk about the general sources of information will come from telephone taps, analysis of our garbage, surveillance, behavior of our children in school, uh -huh. our standard of living by the kind of food we buy, the shelter we live in, our clothing, our transportation. They go on to talk about how they will know our social contacts, our telephone bills will be itemized and recorded, and family marriage certificates, birth certificates, they're going to know all of this. Our friends, our associates, memberships to organizations, political affiliations, our personal buying habits, checking accounts, credit card purchases, tagged credit card purchases, the credit card purchase of products bearing the Universal Product Code. Remember, the U, this is they're talking UPC barcode, and, and this is 60 right. years ago. 60 years ago. That's right. And they talk about uh, data mining all of our assets, our checking accounts, mm -hmm. our saving accounts, mm -hmm. real estate, our business, our automobiles, our safety deposits at the banks, our st the stock market, our portfolios, the liabilities even to our creditors and enemies. They say, see the legal liabilities and your enemy and the liabilities of your loans. They also talk about government sources or ploys, and I find this just amazing. They talk about implementing of welfare, social security, uh, doles and grants and subsidies, and they say the principle of these ploys, the citizen will almost always make the collection of information easy if he can operate on the free sandwich principle of eat now and pay later. Yeah. And Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely. And then they go on to say again, you know, as you said, Jeff, this is in 1954. It's way before the Internet, way before computers. Absolutely. Well, you know, they were working on them then. Oh, we they knew. They know. knew. We didn't know. They yeah, knew. we didn't. And that's right. And on page 32, they talk about government sources of intimidation, internal revenue service, OSHA, and the census. And they say that other government sources are surveillance of the U.S. mail. And I mean mail, not mail men, but mail posting. They also talk about methods of coping and adaptability and how to monitor the stresses of our coping under the stress that they've created through our consumption of alcohol, drugs, entertainment, etc. We're going to move on over to page 34. And we're going to talk about the additional things that they take a look at and put into their data banks. Court records, police records, our driving records, insurance information, anti-establishment acquaintances, uh, banks and credit bureaus, credit information, payment information. So if people think they're data mining, yeah, yeah, they have. And this is additionally what they're doing. So they talk about miscellaneous sources, polls and surveys telephone records, energy and utility purchases. 
They go on to talk about the manipulation of energy and society, or the economy, the uh, uh, manipulation of the economy and society, uh-huh. how they will destroy our opportunities, control the economic environment, control the availability of raw materials, capital, control bank rates, control inflation of currency, control the possession of property, control manufacturing, the availability of goods, the prices of commodities, uh, services and labor force, uh, payments to government officials, legal functions, they'll control personal data files, and uncorrectable by the party slandered. So these files stay on your record and they know all of these things. They control advertising, the media, uh, the uh, material available for tel- TV viewing. They uh, disengage attention from real issues and engage our emotions. They create disorder, chaos, and insanity. This, uh, let me say one thing. This suggests a collective intelligence that is a half step above what we would consider to be even bright humans. There's something else going on here. This is being directed by a supremely wise collective or group somewhere, off-planet, on-planet, I don't know. Maybe there's a combination going on here. But to have brought all this together and put it in a document in 1954-55 like this, is Orwell would have been envious. This is amazing. It, I agree. I agree. There is something so sinister and evil and immoral and corrupt that it is going to eliminate everything that is good and decent. That is the plan. They talk about how um, they will control, uh, oh, they say controls a design of more probing tax forms, controls surveillance, sure. and the storage of information, develops psychological analysis and profiles of individuals. We hear people complaining about that all the time, how they're forced to have psychological evaluations. Exactly. They, they yeah. say they control the legal functions, the sociological factors, health options, which we see happening now. There are no health options. Praise on weaknesses, cripples strengths, and leeches wealth and, and subsistence. Well, the so-called health options we're going to be given beginning January of 2014 will be administered and enforced by the IRS. Now, there's part, of, there's part of your silent weapons, quiet wars. Absolutely. And on page 36, um, I'm just going to read this. Uh, it says, collapse of the currency, that it will destroy the faith of the people, of the American people in one another. And what we have to do is read this information so that we are not uh, looking at the American people for the cause of this. This has all been a self plan. We have been data mined. This has been a a plan many years ago. We've been played. We've been poisoned now beyond our ability in many instances to think. If we're going to at least um, live in right conduct through something that is so horrific, we need to at least understand their attack plans. And this is it. This is their attack plan on us. I want to just go over a little bit of the NASA document. Um, I know we've just got mere minutes left, but just to let people know that it is about um, uh, the world is on the verge of a global change, and they talk about that in the NASA war document that was found on the NASA website that we've loaded up on our site. And they they talk about the speed of data uh, uh, transmission and how it's increased by multiple of millions, the rate of globally significant events, and that of discoveries and crisis is growing exponentially. They talk about how our civilization is like an uncaptained ship sailing on rough seas without a chart or a compass, and all the while moving faster and faster. And they say the time we have to make the right decisions is shorter and shorter. We're facing a choice to fall into a new dark age or into affliction and degradation. And they talk about how um, it's clear that a, you know, a revolution will also require the deepest social transformation. I'm just, this is an assessment of the document, Jeff. Uh, this is not written in the document. The document is a PowerPoint, but this is filling in the connections of that PowerPoint. And I know that we'll spend more time on this document on our next show, but I just want people to understand 
that the plan for humanity is there is no plan for human beings any longer. We are well, not human beings as we know them. There, no. there is a plan for remanufactured, reconfigured, rehabilitated human beings under their own aegis and image. That's they're, exactly they're right. They're recreating us, and we talked about. I mentioned they're they're terraforming us. They are literally recreating humans. This will be the next great <clears throat> evolutionary jump, as it were, in into the trash can. We're going to become walking zombie servants of these people. Programmed to consume, programmed to be uh, nothing but idiots taking in uh, handouts of entertainment, which what they call entertainment anyway. Well, for those that they allow to transform, because many people are just being oh, they're going to eliminate them. along the way. Uh, they're going to lose 75, 85 percent ultimately. They don't want us around. That's absolutely right. They just look at us and they call us cattle. In fact, the very, very last um, paragraph or sentence in the Quiet Weapons Silent War document is it says cattle. Those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brain. There you and go. So this yeah. mindless school of jellyfish, mm -hmm. father, mother, son, and daughter, become useful beasts of burden or trainers of the same. So that is what they think of us, and they are terraforming us. They are transforming us, blending us in with machinery. They want... Um, life extension. This is what they've been working on for many, many years. They want Im immor They want to live forever, the bottom line. And they're, they are... They directed. want immortality. You could also say they want yeah. immorality, which is, which is also what they're going to get. Immorality. It goes hand in hand with their view of immortality. These people are uh, the antithetical version of, uh, of human beings. What, what, all right, here's the big question. We're running out of time here. Who are they, Deborah? Who did this? Well, you know, they will discuss that in their documents as being the rich men of the earth, the Illuminati. But as you said earlier, Jeff, nah, this is sheer else. evil. This something is absolutely, uh, you know, um, uh, interdimensional. Yeah, uh, I think that's. I think there's a front. That's a cover. There's something else at work here, clearly. Well, you know, clearly it's evil, and evil is at such a manifested state at this point, and it is. Uh, so dark. It is the Brotherhood of Darkness, Correct. and whatever you want to call that beyond that, it is evil. And uh, we are being uh, uh, absolutely 